Fighting endgame monsters can be quite a struggle, especially when you might have rushed throughout the content to reach the endgame. Here are my advanced tips for people who are approaching endgame or have just started the endgame content. Before we start the whole video, I do want to say that this video is split up into two parts. The first half will be for people who are beginning their approach to endgame. So I guess you're I guess somewhere in the middle of world or I guess near the end of world content. So that part of the video will be for you guys. Whereas the other half will be for people who have completed everything, they've finished the Iceborne DLC, they've unlocked everything, and they don't know what to do next. So that part will be for you guys and there will be some minor spoilers in there i won't be showing off the final boss in there obviously but i will be showing something that you unlock later like after defeating the boss and everything else so just a fair warning for you guys that don't want to get spoiled and you know i suggest that you complete iceborne before moving to that part of the video but i can't really stop you and plus uh, you know iceborne's already at the end of its cycle so you can go ahead and watch it. <laughs> Starting off with the first tip, which is to be completing bounties. Bounties will allow you to get armor spheres. Armor spheres will help you to upgrade your armor's level. And by doing this, you will be able to increase the defense of your armor, allowing you not to die after a slap from the monster. I was a dumbass and I completely forgot to do this. Now I'm just scratching the surface with the amount of spheres that I have for upgrading armor. This is why I'm telling you that you should be doing this throughout your playthrough of this game. So that you don't end up like me, the broke person just demanding for more armor spheres. The registered and limited bounties are the ones that you should be mainly focusing on. Registered bounties will allow you to select bounties of your choosing, whereas limited bounties are randomly selected and will refresh every day or so. Limited bounties also give out unique rewards, so be sure to check them out every now and then. Next is to keep an eye out on the Botanical Research Center, the Argosy, and the Tail Raider Safari. These three places allow you to farm materials without having to farm them yourself. Rather than having to go out in the wild and waste your time grabbing materials yourself, you can just use these places to get them for you. The Botanical Research Center will only give you one slot to use when you've unlocked it. However, if you complete some optional quests and deliveries, you can get up to a maximum of four slots with more materials to farm. Keep an eye out on which optional quests and delivery to complete for the Botanical Research Center. Now I did say that you are able to get a maximum of 4 slots. I believe that you can only get 4 slots if you have the Iceborne DLC. If you only have World, then I'm pretty sure you're stuck with 2 slots. I might be wrong on that, but if that is the case, then uh, well you're missing out. <laughs> the Argosy will come every now and then, so be sure to check what materials or items they have obtained. The materials and items are pretty random, but you can set up what kind of items or materials they should bring. As for the Tail Raider Safari, it is pretty much the same thing as the Argosy, except that you can choose what materials that you would like to obtain from them. It is still random, but at least you can see what materials you're obtaining from the monsters on the selection you have chosen. Steamworks is another useful place for obtaining armor, items and more, but I wouldn't waste too much of my time here. The Steamworks is only available in the Iceborne DLC. So again, if you do not have the Iceborne DLC, you're basically missing out. But it's not that big of a deal because, well, I wouldn't really, again, waste my time too much here because I could be just actually going out on a hunt and allowing the three places that I mentioned to just farm materials for me rather than mashing buttons and hoping that it will drop whatever item that you expect. The next thing that you should be doing is crafting items that can buff your attack and defense. Four of the items are permanent increases whereas the other six can only be applied when you're hunting a monster. The four items, the power talon, armor talon, power charm and armor charm 
will permanently increase your attack and defense as long as they are in your inventory. The charms are unlocked as soon as you fight your first Diablos and then you can purchase them from the vendor. However, the talents can only be obtained by crafting them using a charm and a material obtained from bezel geese. Which means yes, you're gonna have to fight that annoying monster that blows everything up for no damn reason. After that, then you can obtain the talent. Make sure to craft another charm because making the talent will eat up your existing charm. The six items, Might Seed, Demon Powder, Mega Demon Drug, Adamant Seed, Hard Shell Powder, and Mega Armor Skin all have varying duration rates. The Seed and Powder items only last for 3 minutes. As for the Mega item, that will last until you faint. However, when applying each one, the last item used will override the previous item's duration. Basically, in order for you to get the full benefits of the buffs, you should apply the items in this order. Start with the seed, the powder, and then you should apply the mega item. That way you can have this buff as long as you don't faint. So once again, craft or obtain the power talon, armor talon, power charm, armor charm, might seed, demon powder, mega demon drug, adamant seed, hard shell powder, and mega armor skin in order to increase your attack and defense even more. Next is to try to get all the mantles and equipment. Some of these equipments can prove useful when fighting specific monsters. To obtain them, you need to complete some optional quests and deliveries. However, if you don't have the time to get them all, I highly suggest that you obtain the Temporal and Rock Steady Mantles. These two mantles are probably the most used items for how they can be extremely useful when fighting monsters. The Temporal Mantle will allow you to automatically dodge any attack. When I mean any, I mean any attack. Even attacks that would require you to do the invincible dodge can be dodged with this mantle on. Now it does have a limit of I'd say 3 or 4 attacks before you have to wait for it to recharge. I would suggest when using it, you should just fight the monster and if you basically make a mistake, then the temporal mantle will save your life. As for the rock steady mantle, you will be able to tank any attacks or roars without it interrupting your attacks. Really good if you want to deal damage to the monster without stopping. However, you better watch out for your health as that will still drain when the monster hits you. I like to pair the rock steady mantle with a health booster so that I'm constantly healing and fighting a monster at the same time without stopping. I believe that you can only obtain these two items at a much later part of the game, somewhere near the end of world content, but just before Iceborne content. That is where you are able to obtain either Rock Steady Mantle or the Temporal Mantle. Next place to look at is the Elder Melder. The Elder Melder is the best place for obtaining rare items and materials. For example, the Wyvern Gem is a rare drop when fighting monsters. So rather than fighting a monster and hoping and praying for the RNG god to bless you with this gem, you can just build it straight from the Melder. No need to waste your time. There's also some unique decorations in there, so be sure to check them out. The sixth tip that you should be doing is fighting tempered monsters. Tempered monsters are normally indicated by a purple glow around the monster icon. The rewards obtained from fighting these monsters will give you decorations. This is a good way to farm decorations for your armor pieces that you will need throughout endgame. These monsters are more aggressive than normal ones and they will do more damage to you. So be careful when fighting these monsters. Alright, now we can move on to the tips that are for people who have reached the end game content. So you've completed Ice Spawn, you've fought the final boss, you've unlocked everything. These tips are for you guys and as for the people who haven't reached that point, this is where some spoilers will be at. So just to warn you guys that this is where the spoiler is and if you haven't completed Ice Spawn and you don't want to see these yeah, then I probably would suggest that you turn off maybe. 
I don't know. Let's jump straight into the thing that should have unlocked after the final boss of Iceborne, which is the Gaiden Lands. The Gaiden Lands have special material that can only be obtained in there. You should be fighting the monsters in there so that you can level up different regions in the game to eventually fight Tempered Monsters. Tempered Monsters normally appear at level 4 or higher in a region. The Tempered Monsters in here will not only give you decorations, but they will also drop special material which is useful for the next tip. The next tip is augmentation. Augmentation will allow your weapons to perform better. For example, you can increase the damage of your weapon, or I'd say one of the most sought out thing to have in your weapon is health regen. The materials obtained from tempered monsters in the Gaiden Lands are used for weapon augmentations. This is why I have said that you should be fighting tempered monsters in the Gaiden Lands. Augmentation can also be used for your armor, as it will remove the level cap of your armor piece. And again, just as a reminder for people upgrading armor, when you upgrade your armor, it will basically increase your defense. Now I want to jump back to the Elder Melder because in here there is something called the Gaiden Alchemy. The Gaiden Alchemy will allow you to choose specific monsters that you would like to lure out in the Gaiden Lands. This is extremely useful because rather than wasting your time in the Gaiden Lands, fighting each and every monster, hoping that you'll get the monster to lure out, you can just go to the Elder Melder. However, the monster that you can lure out is tied to whether you have basically found out this monster has appeared in the Gaiden Lands. Meaning that if you haven't found that particular monster yet, then uh, you're gonna have to do it the good old fashioned way. <laughs> Lastly, the final tip that I can give you is to go into the events. With Iceborne being at the end of the game cycle, the devs allowed all game events to be open and permanent. There's quite a lot of good events that you should be doing to obtain special rewards from them. One of my favorite quests is to do the brand new brute event. Because as I've said before, I don't have a lot of armor spheres. But in here, armor spheres drop like no tomorrow. Another good event is the Moon is a Harsh Queen event. This is where you get to fight the Gold Raffian. I use this event to farm for the Gold Raffian armor, which is really good for getting the Divine Blessing skill to level 5. So once again, look into some quests for those spicy rewards. That is all I have on advanced tips for Iceborne. Especially how this game is at the end of its cycle, there's no more content coming for it, and well, Monsanto Rise is just around the corner. And I will obviously be covering that in my later videos. So I guess be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and give this video a like if you found this video useful in some way. And you should follow me on Twitch, link is down in the description box below where you get to talk to me live about some games, some anime and any other thing else. It's a really nice place for me to chill and chat with you guys. So be sure to check in there. And you should follow me on my Twitter for any other channel updates, I post whenever I'm going live as well and I like to tweet out some nice things here and there. Like the Nintendo Direct, that was not too long ago I guess, and some other stuff that's on the internet. So be sure to follow me on Twitter as well. Thank you guys for watching and I shall see you guys later. Okay, do it. We're doing it. Mmm, easy. All I need to do is just that move. What the heck? <laughs> easy. <laughs> That's... This man, this man. Ha <laughs> ha.